Good evening. This is the committee of the Community Partnerships Committee. Uh, to my left is Jeffrey Schilling. Um, I'm William Rosal is chairman, and Mr. Uh, Todd Siebert is unavailable this evening. And we are here to make a recommendation, uh, consideration of request for the Troy Strawberry Festival for the board of regarding uh, suspending Dora during the Strawberry Festival on June 3rd and 4th. 2022. Any other information on that? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to clarify, the uh, the council has passed the uh, notwithstanding legislation, which does not include any language regarding DORA. To suspend the DORA would require the council to pass a resolution. Um, at the uh, time of the last discussion, uh, I guess two weeks ago at, Monday, at the Monday night committee meeting, um, the, uh, uh, the committee uh, recommended that the DORA not be, suspe uh, be suspended. Um, the, uh, the Troy Strawberry Festival since that time has uh, uh, made two uh, requests or, or statements, I guess. One is that they've uh, now requested that the DORA be suspended both days. Uh, previously, they were just asking for suspension on uh, Saturday night or Saturday, I should say. Um, now they have asked that the door be suspended for Friday and Saturday. Um, then I forgot the second point, which will come to me as soon as somebody starts talking. <laughs> it's been a long night. Yes, it has. Um, and they, thank you, because that just came up, yes. Um, and uh, I did receive an email earlier, um, gosh, two hours ago now, um, that the Strawberry Festival has decided that they will not operate a beer garden on, um, on the back side of the levee, on the north side of the levee. So, so do we have to, to change anything we've passed? Because that was in there, wasn't it? Uh, the notwithstanding just gives them authority to to okay. file the paperwork to do a temporary permit for the beer garden. Uh, so it's not necessary to reverse uh, or you know, rescind any legislation related to the beer garden. They just simply don't follow through, which is their right. Wasn't that done by the chamber? Was the chamber of commerce going to run the beer garden? When that I, that was my impression. Uh, the chamber of commerce, my understanding is, was going to uh, man it or operate it, uh, provide volunteers on behalf of the strawberry festival. I'm not aware of, you know, what the quid pro quo is. Okay. Or was was to be. Um. You know, when we voted on Dora, it seemed like a long time ago. <laughs> um, two of the um, concerns that were expressed by residents in Troy, in residents um, in Troy, were the the, the fact of uh, compliance with Dora, having you know, people complying with Dora, and the second one was um, trash. Uh, the extra trash that may be generated by Dora. And um, we were assured that um, enforcement of the DORA regulations would not, was not going to be a problem, and neither was trash. And yet, uh, two weeks ago, as part of the reasoning um, why DORA should be suspended, was that they, they were, that the that city staff was concerned, uh, expressed by the chief of police, uh, that uh, they would have some some problems with uh, enforcing Dora, especially in the in the the Avenue uh, uh, North Market Street, uh, connecting you know the levee and the downtown. They were afraid that alcoholic beverages would be transported from outside the Dora district to the levee or uh, to the levee, and uh, they they felt that um, uh, there was some problem in in. Uh, reviewing that to make sure that that wasn't going to happen. And then the other thing we heard was, is, well, we've got Dora trash containers, and then we're going to have other trash containers from the Troy Strawberry, and, you know, there's going to be some problem in emptying them. And, and uh, so, the, 
you know, I just I uh, I look at this as an opportunity um, to uh, you know really see what we can do. You know, I, first I'd like to, to commend uh, WDTN Channel Two. Uh, for those of you who are up at seven o'clock on um, Sunday morning, um, <laughs> they had a very very nice piece about Troy downtown and, and the Dora that we that we have implemented. They're very very complimentary and. A lot of positive result, a lot of positive comments came from that um, uh, piece that they did. I want to thank them for that. And again, I think that shows that what the potential of what can happen um, you know, when Dora is, is is people are allowed to participate in Dora uh, and enjoy the benefits, uh, you know, of, of the program. And I mean, I, there's no doubt that I think that that. Uh, uh, administering DORA under the Strawberry, Strawberry Festival um, uh, influx of people is going to be a challenge, but I think it's a challenge that the city of Troy can handle. Uh, I think that, um, you know, we've got, I know the uh, police chief had, uh, you know, was concerned about budget, and I, I applaud him for uh, being concerned about budget and the number of people that, that are, need, are going to be needed. Um, but again, I think we have, uh, you know, we just got $1.3 million of, of money from, um, COVID and, and um, you know, with a $48 million budget, I think we, could, we can afford to, if we need to, to get some additional uh, police force in here, whether, I don't know whether we can, you know, hire some off-duty uh, 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 county sheriffs or other, you know, Tip City, Piqua, uh, you know, those type, you know, get some, get some other officers in here on a, on a uh, contract basis to, to help enforce or whatever, whatever needs. And again, the, you know, setting a big trash can up there on, in, on uh, uh, North uh, Market Street uh, and saying, you know, no beverages past this point, dump it or drink it, you know, I think that uh, we, can, we can handle this thing. And I'd like to see Troy, uh, you know, take this thing and, and run with it and see if we can handle this. I, we've gotten a, a couple of comments from downtown businesses that sell alcohol, and uh, they have both said that they want to have Dora. They think that this would be a great idea. Uh, I, in talking to, to Kathy, it was... You know, we have, I use the figure of 50,000 people, but we get 50,000 people in downtown Troy on a Saturday, and 10% uh, of those people buy a Dora drink, that's 5,000 Dora drinks that would benefit, go directly benefiting, um, you know, the downtown businesses. And one of the businesses point out that they pick out certain charities uh, every year to, their, some of their proceeds from that day go towards, uh, uh, you know, some of our to help out some of the, the charities that are working at, at the Strawberry Festival, and, and uh, so again, I think this is something that uh, you know we, that we can. I think we can take a look at it and, and, and do it. Uh, so after the meeting um, two uh, two weeks ago, uh, the uh, police chief and I met, um, and we discussed alternatives as to how we can manage the uh, uh, the boundaries okay uh, one complicating factor was the confusion between the beer garden and the Dora and the fact that once you hit the hit Water Street and the bridge the south part of the bridge you know you, you might think that you can go across because there's beer on the levee you know without having to explain that no we were talking about a beer garden so that's now cool. not going to be an issue uh, we also came up with a contingency plan uh, whereby we would use uh, uh, bicycle fencing, if you will, for lack of a better term, that we have out at, uh, uh, at the arena. We bought a substantial amount of that fencing where we could put sections of it across as w and, and then add um, trash toters uh, with signage as well as put some banners across the uh, the bicycle fencing saying you know dora ends here um, talk to uh, staff talk to the uh, the trash hauler for the uh, strawberry festival uh, evening um, uh, he he would like to to try it he is not doesn't sound like he's concerned he may be after the event but uh, it is something that he said that he's willing to uh, uh, to take on um, what we would do is we would remove the uh, blue ornamental 
trash cans um, and replace those for the weekend, which we we do uh, every strawberry festival, but uh, with roll roll off toters like you see, you know, like we give to residents, um, and have those with signage uh, clearly marked so the people know where the boundaries are, uh, and then we would have uh, then then uh, Sean would have or Police Chief uh, McKinney would have. Um, uh, staff there to uh, discourage people and, and make sure that they don't walk across the bridge with a door drink. Um, I was reminded today that in uh, 2021, last year, uh, we did a similar event, probably wasn't uh, the kind of crowd uh, numbers that we hope to have this year, um, but it was a Friday and a Saturday event. Uh, it was confined to the downtown. Uh, but uh, did have uh, uh, alcohol uh, during the uh, the same times as what the door the door had, um, and uh, we we managed that just fine. Didn't have any issues there. Uh, so as far as I mean, we're still concerned. We're still going to be watching closely. We're hoping that we have some volunteer support. Uh, from the promote Dora folks and the in the pro, you know, the proponents for uh, of the Dora uh, to kind of help self police, um, and they will not be able to buy the surplus tasers before that that we talked about <laughs> earlier. Um, just just putting it out there. Um, but they can't buy the chairs. They, yeah, they, no, they, they won't be able to buy the chairs and throw those either. But. Um, and so we do have a game plan in, in the event that the council wants to uh, continue with the DORA. Um, you know, we'll do our best uh, as a staff to be as successful as possible. It was my impression or understanding that, that um, it's coming back to us with, with the changes due to chamber or the festival had some legal liability concerns or... Are they liable in any way? That uh, uh, Mr. Kerber's in the audience. I'll, I'll call him. I'll call him out um, regarding allocation of risk and some of the other concerns. I mean, that seemed to be their overwhelming concern to check two weeks ago whether they would be liable for a door incident since we give them a notwithstanding agreement. Well, every year there's a contract between the city and the Strawberry Festival Corporation, that the nonprofit board there, and within that contract, there's always a discussion about insurance required requirements for, you know, of course the city carries maintains insurance as well as the Strawberry Festival, and there's usually input from the insuring insurance providers as well in that regard. Um, as far as um, uh, the allocation, uh, you know, it, uh, we would specify in any sort of contract on that, and I know that we have been in contact with the, the, the city's insurance provider on that, um, I, and it doesn't appear that there's any concerns on behalf of the city's insurance provider that that's an issue. Uh, we haven't, I, I've asked for some information. If the Strawberry Festival thinks that insurance or the allocation of risk is, is an issue, I've asked for some, some guidance on that, but I haven't received anything in that regard. But I, I think when you look at that issue, it's important to, um, <clears throat> back when uh, council uh, and the city was uh, contemplating the DORA, uh, I, I know it was mentioned that um, just because it's DORA and people walk out the door doesn't limit uh, the individual store owner's responsibility. Obviously, they still have duties under the law not to uh, serve underage people, not to overserve people, and not to serve inebriated people, and that, that continues. So to the extent that um, I, I'm not sure where any liability, I, I haven't been aware, and I've had discussions with several people, or where would this liability arise, and I, I just can't contemplated what sort of liability would fall either upon the Strawberry Festival or the city because um, neither party's providing the alcohol. Uh, it's just a venue of, by itself. Thank you. Mm -hmm. it, it, Mr. Kerr, I just want to emphasize it, the DORA and the Strawberry Festival are two separate programs. 
I mean, they're, they're running and decide we're running them, you know, together. I mean, the same time period, but mm -hmm. they're not related in any way. Is that that's correct, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. The, the one's not tied to the other. If there was no strawberry festival, there, there would still be Dora, and if there was no Dora, there's you know, it's still, yeah, they're, they're totally distinct uh, matters. So if somebody if somebody <clears throat> for some reason feels that they participated in Dora and something happened and they feel that somebody is liable, the more unlikely they would come back to the city on that, wouldn't they, versus the Troy Strawberry Festival? I mean, uh, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, when people, when people suffer, uh, unfortunately, sometimes when people feel that they've been wrong, they just sue anybody uh, at, at any point in time, and things usually work themselves out in that regard. Um, and again, I, I just don't know uh, and I'm not aware, uh, again, that the city has run this past our uh, 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 insurance pool uh, and consulted with them to make sure that there was no concerns in, in that regard, and uh, no we concern. didn't receive any negative feedback. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Kerber, mm -hmm. uh, last year, uh, the Strawberry Festival um, sold alcohol. So is there any more... Uh, risk one way or the other with the door in existing in existence now versus then uh, for the chamber. Well, and I hesitate to speak. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Tro Troy Strawberry Festival mm -hmm. Committee. Well, I, you know, and uh, you sorry. know, to the extent that usually when the um, uh, it's and I don't, I haven't done a lot of work on, on that side, but it's my understanding usually when somebody uh, applies for an F permit, they seek special event insurance coverage because th their responsibility in that regard is different. If you're providing the alcohol, it's your responsibility to check on the age. It's your responsibility to not overserve. It's your, your responsibility, a number of those different things. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in this situation, it's all the store owners who are uh, under the door. That's their responsibility, and they have to answer to their own insurer. And then possibly, you know, if there's any claims, they'd have to answer to that. So, so the short answer would be there would be less likely for the Tro Troy Strawberry Festival Committee to have less liability than withholding a liquor permit under their name. I would think so. Um, okay. Mr. Wood, anything? Is anyone still here? <clears throat> Strawberry Festival Committee people have any comments? Oh, just a few. <laughs> and I'll do what we're going to do. Come on down. I am. <laughs> <coughs> Linda Roth, 1164 West Main Street, and I'm the chairman of the Troy uh, Strawberry Festival Board. First, I want to give you a little bit of background. As you know, the festival was founded in 1977 as a means for local nonprofits to fundraise. Most recently, the festival has had 65 plus nonprofits participate. And those nonprofits, many of them, are small businesses also. The festival is a 401c4 organization and is a separate legal entity. We're not controlled by the chamber, as Joey just said. We do have an agreement in place for chamber staff to manage the festival per our guidance and oversight. Back to the festival. Over the years, the festival has grown to being one of the premier festivals in Ohio and welcomes upwards of 150,000 people to Troy throughout that weekend. In 2019, the festival helped nonprofits raise over $300,000, and in 218, 520,000. It has always been known as a family-friendly festival, and in 2014, we expanded into downtown Troy to, to be more inclusive. Sorry if I get shaky here. This isn't my um, usual place to be. Uh, we were trying to be more inclusive of patrons with disabilities and those that found the levy hard to access. The addition of alcohol at the festival has been discussed since 2013. We as a festival have always been told no and that it would change the atmosphere 
of the festival. That all changed with the Strawberry Jam last year when the festival was allowed to have a permit and sell the alcohol. In July of 2021 at the Strawberry Jam evaluation meeting, we shared that we would be requesting a beer garden. And I know that we've said that we will not do that, but we had some issues with that. <coughs> we want to make clear that the request was due to being able to Oh, was it be being able to control the venue and liability issues, not as a substitute for Dora. We began meeting or with the city to finalize plans for the 2022 festival. We requested a beer garden in January, and we're told, and we also requested that the Dora be shut off. Several options for the location of the beer garden were discussed, including the option of having a permitted area in downtown Troy, like we did last year, mimicking the strawberry jam. The location on the levee allows for a controlled, fenced-in area, keeps the alcohol as a secondary item rather than the primary, keeps the alcohol sales away from many of the nonprofits and in more of a passive nature regarding competitive sales. After discussing with, with uh, city staff, um, Patrick and the police chief, and looking at the control and enforcement concerns with adding alcohol to a festival that brings in 150,000 people, it was requested that we look at a compromise that was a win-win for both the businesses and the festival. That compromise was what we discussed at the previous committee meeting with the door being turned off on Saturday. Let me take a breath. We didn't know at the time that a door request would need to be separate from the notwithstanding agreement that we have with the city. And we, would need, we did not know we would need to come directly to council. We should make it clear that we did not realize that we had a liability concern at the time. This has come to our attention as we discussed it with our attorney and our insurance company. That liability is spelled out in the contract that we signed with the city. History with Dora. Regarding Dora, the festival was told on numerous occasions that the Dora would be turned off for the festival. We were told that festival attendees were not the target audience for the Dora, and that our patrons might become rowdy or cause conflicts. Not us, others. When the citizens were asked to vote for the Dora, they were told that the Dora could be, could be turned off for special events. Concerns that we have. Dora sales will impact the sales of the local nonprofits. Keep in mind that many of these nonprofits rely on the festival for their fundraising needs. Without a festival for two years, they have been greatly impacted. The festival was founded to support local nonprofits and provide them with the venue. What they're losing, if you have strawberry shakeups, lemon shakeups, if it's hot, a lot of people are going to go for the beer and the Dora. And we have had some nonprofits that last year when we did the beer, they lost money from what they had had in the previous years. Liability concerns and potential for additional costs. We as a board have liabil liability concerns and we're not willing to pay for the additional liability issues. Currently, we take on the liability for the festival venue per our contract. In 2017, because we make a contract and the town becomes ours, we had a, there was a patron at the festival, fell on a curb in downtown Troy. We're being sued. It's still in litigation. The city is off of that, aren't they? Okay, they're not? Okay. I'm wrong on that. But at any rate, I know we aren't being, well, I won't go any far. Um, and it's important to note that we are only 40 days until the festival 
and we haven't seen a contract or a draft of the contract yet. Our request is for you to suspend DORA, which you already know, due to the liability concerns that the festival has. We're not against DORA. I would say that 90%, if not all, of the festival board voted for the DORA. We're not against the businesses in downtown Troy. Part of the reason we are staying in downtown Troy is because of the businesses. We could be other places. We are first and foremost concerned about the liability that we will incur and making sure that a potential incident doesn't make the festival a thing of the past. We've also looked at other places. Tip City turned off the Dora during the Mun Festival car show and car show due to the nature and size of the event. We are a member of the Ohio Fest Festival Committee or Association and we've learned that most festivals that are uh, having their festivals, they move without, w w outside the district and have, uh, they're in parks and other areas of the city. We also considered applying for a permit that would be within the downtown. That would, it, for the beer garden originally. That would make the festival area a Dora establishment and would not allow Dora Cups purchased at another Dora establishment come within our boundaries, causing more confusion. Last year, I know that there weren't many problems, but there were establishments, establishments oh, my mouth is dry, downtown who sold co carry out cocktail drinks that were then consumed without the permit, within the permit area of the event. And I know that because I had a student from way back that had, as well as others, um, <coughs> telling me about it and showing me. We have an option. While we move the festival downtown in 2014 to be more inclusive for accessibility reasons and to show off our beautiful downtown, it has become clear that it is much more difficult from a liability standpoint to include the downtown and the festival venue. Uh, I think I've already read that. Do you have any questions? And I have several people with me that can answer questions, and I'll try. I, I guess I'm back to the liability thing. We just I know. Heard, heard, and he says, no liability. You say liability, so what? It's what our attorney's telling us. None of us here tonight what, what, what liability is, is the attorney saying then? Your attorney saying. Um, so I think it's the ongoing um, liability that we've had. Um, in exa the example she gave you is an example of that. That the venue we're, we're, we signed, <coughs> the venue is signed over to us, and anything that happens within that venue, the Troy Strawberry Festival is responsible for. And I believe we indemnify the city as well. Grant? <laughs> sure. uh, yeah, um. And I mean, and I can answer through that. I mean, that's what I'm hearing from attorneys from our insurance company for that previous incident as well. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I, I reached out to the, the Strawberry Festival Awards attorney on Wednesday, and, and I sent a copy of the 2022 proposed contract at, at that point in time. And I requested specifically uh, for identification of. What liability do you set? Uh, what are you Stinking, talking about? Yeah. Because uh, of course you have insurance, but then whether or not it's a valid claim, I guess is. And uh, I'm not seeing how, uh, it, what sort of claim that would arise uh, simply by virtue of the door being there. Um, the only action that the city has done is to um, say yes, there can't be a door area. All right, and they adopted a plan in that regard. Uh, that they are not active whatsoever in the sale of alcohol or the provision of alcohol or anything of that nature. So yes, I mean anything that can happen, uh, it, and somebody can, you know, say, oh, it happened within this area. It, it doesn't mean that anything that happens to somebody, all of a sudden, the strawberry festival or the city of Troy pays for that. So, 
based on what you plan to do now. Without the beer garden, you mean? You're not selling alcohol whatsoever. There's, there's nothing. Uh, us, just to clarify, us selling alcohol was never the concern. I mean, your question uh, earlier. I know, but I'm saying. Yeah. But, so. but as far as, so in the agreement, you don't have control of agave and rye. You don't have control no. of parents. You don't have control of anybody, anytime, well, with or without the door. Correct. I would guess. Yes. I hope not. I mean, so, <laughs> I guess my question would be then. The only thing with the door would be the people will be out walking around as opposed to coming out of those establishments and something happened and suing you like the previous incident. Likely. So I, 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 I still not seeing the liability issue. <laughs> I, but I, mean, I mean, okay. Would it, would it be possible to get some written clarification from your insurance company attorney? That's what you requested. Well, I know, but I mean, can we follow up on that and, and get that before the next council meeting? Yeah, we'll try to do that, yes. We'll, okay. we'll plan on doing that. Okay, let's, let's, and then that way, give Grant a couple of, some time to look that over and see what, give us some guidance on this, because I just, you know, I'm not seeing it either. That's my, that's my problem. I don't see the liability in it. Okay. Can I ask for clarification that that would have to come back to committee before a council meeting? <laughs> I don't know why he keeps going back to his <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I No, it, it would not go to a county. No, it wouldn't go to well, I mean, it could, but I mean, we, we could, I mean, if we get information. If we table this. I mean, if, 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 if said Grant gets a letter, gives us, it, within the next week, he can give us the information, and that would help us make a decision. Well, because this. Grant answer that question? <laughs> I mean. Well, uh, you know, normally you have to, if you're going to make a recommendation, you have to Everybody into a time crunch as well, and I, I don't want to speak for you. No, no, <laughs> no that's exactly because yeah. that's why I asked for clarification because I assumed it would have to come back to committee before. Which is if two, you would which make would be, a recommendation, which would be another two have, weeks. Yes, it would be another two weeks, and as she stated, we are at the forty-day mark right and, now. and three weeks to decide. And, and it's a really a difficult topic to try to make it subject to any sort of conditions either, because there's going to be. It's not going to be a black or white type of answer. There's going to be more of a discussion on that. Okay. Any additional comments, Mr. Phillips? Well, I, I kind of have a, a thought running around my head, and Grant, you might be. Sure. <laughs> Don't let you fall out. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so we, we have uh, we've enacted a law mm -hmm. uh, uh, with putting the door in place which affects uh, many businesses downtown. And we did that at the request uh, of the businesses and uh, private citizens and, uh, and uh, Troy Main Street and others um, to enhance, well, to do various things. So we are having one organization requesting that we suspend um, this uh, rule to the exclusion of all the other businesses that would uh, benefit from it. So does it make sense, I guess, or is there uh, some uh, rule of law or civil or otherwise that would prevent excluding uh, a large number of businesses to the exclusion of one to suspend the door? To, uh, to benefit one organization versus the many. Well, that uh, certainly implicates uh, policy decisions as well as legal decisions right. uh, in regard to that. Uh, there are certain circumstances uh, under the, uh, uh, the code section that allows uh, cities to have the door that they talk about. Cities are allowed to make health and safety modifications as necessary. So to the extent that I, I, I guess I, I wouldn't see a, um, a legal hurdle to, in the event that the city ever did want to uh, uh, suspend that, I mean, certainly Ohio law has provided that that can be done. 
Now, to the extent that um, uh, a person that might feel that uh, it could impl implicate their economic or constitutional rights or some, I don't think the law is developed enough to really provide an answer, but I think you're right to uh, identify that as a potential issue. Okay. Um, and also, with trying to think back accurately, and I could be wrong, um, when we originally talked about this, fully recognizing that some events, whether it was GOBA, Pink Ribbon Girls, or TSF, or any other organization with a large uh, event, that would want to have uh, an alcohol permit within the DORA, or to encompass uh, a large portion of the, the DORA, that that was a primary reason to uh, pot uh, potentially suspend a DORA because of two competing permit licenses. Is that, it, it might, is my thinking kind of correct there? I, I certainly recall discussions in that regard, and there, there is certainly, and I, I don't, forgive me, uh, right now, the, there is um, a specific provision in the DORA <coughs> statute that talks about the interplay between the F license, which would be a festival type, as well as DORA. So there, it's been it's contemplated in the law. I don't want to speak with total authority to uh, in that regard, though. Yeah, well, not being a professional in that organization or in that uh, type of business, I, I it's very complicated. Mm -hmm. I, I recognize that from you as a professional in that, um, but. Uh, this may be a question back to Mr. Titterington, uh, but in those discussions along the line that I'm going here, I don't know that we ever spoke about just suspending the DORA just because of an event, period. It was all related, if I'm not mistaken, related to issues with licensing, competing licenses, um, and that sort of thing. And that's where I'm having some real trouble with uh, hurting the businesses that we have heard from, that the council has heard from in emails and uh, Facebook and, and other medias, that, uh, that that was not part of that discussion. So every, I, the, the discussions that we've had have been purely hypothetical. Correct. Uh, you know, what ifs. Um, Grant is correct. The, the, the provision in the law is you can't have an F1 or 2 permit within Adora, you have to, it, it creates a conflict. Um, whether it's an event um, or it's a, an alcohol sales event, whether it has an F1 or is it, you know, just a, a, a more regional event, the, the, the discussion has always been that, you know, as, as a request is made, council would consider it and, and look at all the pros and cons, pluses and minuses. That's all that's ever been talked about. Um, uh, Mr. Roth is, is correct. This, you know, the Strawberry Festival has always been talked about as being, uh, probably to understate it, the, the most unique event that we, we have, uh, bringing in quite a diverse crowd, uh, many of whom are from outside of, uh, uh, of the community. And so that has always been brought up as one that could potentially involve a suspension of, uh, of the DORA. Okay. Thank you. I don't think I have Dare, dare I sit down? You can probably sit down. Yes, the room for our conversation. Come on. Come on down. Get in line for that taser. <laughs> Hi, Jules Harris, uh, 170 Riverside Drive. Uh, I am a future chair for the Troy Strawberry Festival, so I am on the um, the board. I think in the end, what we're looking for is if someone is drunk, there's no identifiable. They have a Dora cup. It doesn't say what establishment they're in. They've been overserved. Whatever it is, somebody bought it, handed it to somebody else. They're drunk, they're hurt, they hurt someone else at the Strawberry Festival, who's responsible? I guess you can't sit down, Grant. <laughs> that's, I mean, really, that's, that's I think, our, our whole issue. 
that's it. Well, uh, that's so lots of us are all for the Dora. We just, with the Strawberry Festival and insurance, we're just trying to figure that out. I don't think, if I may, as, as a lay person, but been in the law enforcement field, that, that's a question you can't answer on, a, on an absolute. Anybody can sue anybody for anything. That's just common knowledge. Now, whether they prevail in court is the, is the crux of the whole matter. Sure. And so the circumstances of whatever the event is is going to dictate what, what the outfall from that is. So, y y yes, I mean, in, in contract language, you say you have the, you're indemnifying the city and you're taking them responsible. But that is not a, responsible, a responsibility for somebody doing a stupid thing. Okay? So, you, as Mr. Kerber pointed out, you have businesses, uh, particularly the alcohol businesses, that have a duty to do X number of things. And then we have a duty as a private citizen walking out of an establishment with a drink to do certain things. Sure. And if I, as a private citizen, went outside of that business and did stupid things, then that liability is on me, not on you. However, I may blame you, right. as people do, yeah. and you may have to defend it. But it's ultimately up to the court as, as, the, as the arbiter of, of that event. And generally, that's why you don't get... We can hear about but I think this is the hamster wheel that we're in. Yes, yeah, but yeah. you cannot, you, I don't think that we, anybody in this room, Brandon included, can answer that question for you. So that, those are, I think, the common sense gen, generalities and facts of life when you do this sort of thing. Okay. In my it, opinion. It, it, I would it, just it, answer that with, it was somewhat of a question, uh, uh, answering it with a question, sorry. Uh, is, uh, you know, usually with, with like negligence claims saying that somebody did something wrong, whether it's the city or the uh, strawberry festival, somebody's going to bring a claim, they have to identify a duty. Uh, and I guess my question would be, what, what duty has either the city or the strawberry festival violated if somebody gets drunk on their own accord? And, and I guess that's, that's really what it boils down to. Uh, we have to follow our duties, but... Uh, um, and again, it is no, um, you know, there's no magic bullet for bringing people bringing claims against a, a city or a strawberry bus. Well, that, that can occur, and that's why we're very careful on both sides to make sure that we have insurance. So, so is, you, is the overriding concern that there'll be more drunk people, or they just well, run, no, into, run in because we have more is. people there? Honestly, I don't think that it is. We're not concerned that Dora is going to create that kind of an issue. We're concerned that if someone were to have that type of a situation, because of that, uh, Dora cups are not identified. Uh, we had a woman that fell off of a curb, so that's her lawsuit on us right now. So someone has drinks. You know, there are those people who aren't going to be responsible. I think that we haven't seen that, but Strawberry Festival, it's unprecedented. We're going to be the first big festival to have the Dora in effect. We just want to, I, I think we're just wanting to make sure that we're, you know, that we're getting, we're being covered, so. But that was a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> and, and just to, to follow up from a, a staff perspective and talking to the police chief, who is uh, hiding out in the back of the room, by the way. Once again. Uh, I just noticed that he, he's here. Um, you know, whether there's a Dora or not, whether there's a notwithstanding agreement or not, whether it's an event or just a, a regular night of Dora or just out and about, you know, there's only one group of folks that are licensed, certified to be able to address um, drunk and disorderly folks, and that are, those are your uniform law enforcement. Um, you know, our duty, the Strawberry Festival's duty, is to make sure that there is an adequate number of police officers uh, on the, in the venue uh, at all times uh, to be able to address concerns, which we've had to do prior to the DORA, perhaps with the DORA, um, during events, during alcohol events, you name it. Um, it was no different last year when there was alcohol down, downtown with the Strawberry Jam. Uh, it wasn't a DORA at that point. It was uh, uh, served through the, uh, the F one or F2 permit, can't remember which one. Uh, so, you know, there is that response and we would have that same response as we do every year. Yes. Uh, 
I, I just want to understand what I just heard, though. So what I'm hearing is that you would consider suspension of the DORA for organizations that pull a permit. Is that what I heard? Um, because, again, as we negotiated, that really wasn't, didn't look like it was going to be an enforcement, like an option for us enforcement-wise, things like that. Um, and so we want to make sure that, again, all organizations are treated <laughs> fairly and consistently. So I want some clarification on that and also want to understand then, do we have an option to do that? Okay. Options. Okay. Yeah, option. Options to do what? My, my understanding, okay, from what you're asking is, is that, and I think Mr. Phillips <laughs> brought up this as well, is that, the example, the, the, the Pink Ribbon Girls, when they had their festival downtown, they had a, they had a F1 or F2 permit serving beer within an enclosed area. Just like we did for the strawberry jam. That's right. <laughs> and so we would, my understanding is, is that DORA and those types of permits cannot compete. Is that right? Correct. So we would, we would then, if you, if you had an alcohol venue downtown, within, you know, then, then we would probably suspend DORA because of that. Yes. Okay. Because we can't compete. Now, that's my well, understanding on that, correct? <clears throat> <Mr. Kittington. laughs> I think the chief, I, I know. The chief I'm, needs I'm to explain I'm looking at the that. chief because that's not, not my understanding. That's right. of, so that's not my understanding of how a permit works right. within Adora. So, so I, I did reach out to the Ohio Department, uh, the licensing side of the Department of Commerce, and they explained that they have a... Uh, specific website that explains DORAs and temporary permits. It says a qualifying temporary permit holder that is located within an existing DORA will receive a DORA designation upon issuance of a temporary permit. So you can have a temporary permit inside an existing DORA. The way the director explained it to me is however large your temp permit is, that effectively makes your DORA smaller. So if you have a temp permit that would say take the place of the northwest quadrant of the square, the northwest quadrant of the square is now a permit premise and not a part of the DORA. So the same rules apply for any other permit premise. You cannot bring alcohol from another DORA into that permit premise and the temporary permit can then sell DORA cups that can be removed from their permit premise and into the DORA. Um, so, Sean, just to put that in layman's terms, <coughs> what you're saying is, is that you're not really having a temporary inside of a DORA. You're modifying the boundaries of the DORA to carve out that temporary area, and one can be adjacent to the other. The new information that I heard is, is that that temporary can serve, uh, we can give them a green, no, a blue mm -hmm. plaque uh, that says Dora drinks sold here, and somebody can go out with a Dora cup from the temporary into the Dora area. Correct. But you're, you're still not overlapping the two boundaries, the, the temporary boundary. <coughs> It Correct, but if you were retraces the line, if your so temp permit adjacent to it, if your temporary permit encompasses the whole Dora area, you've effectively eliminated your Dora, or you can suspend your Dora. Claire's mud. <laughs> Claire's mud. Huh? So, so okay. basically, so if, if 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 we went and made the, the temporary thing Prouty Plaza, that makes the boundaries of the temporary permit. They can sell it, they can walk out. But just like going to Agave and Rye, they have to have it consumed, gone, before they go in. Nobody can bring alcohol or bring into in that Prouty temporary Plaza. Per, into Prouty Plaza. Yeah. But the <coughs> F permit in Prouty Plaza, they can sell Dora drinks. It's to go out and then it functions just like, just like, a, normal just like it is now. So basically we have invisible walls around the permit, the temporary permit we've carved out. Let me, let me uh, firebomb this. Uh, this discussion by asking the chief, <laughs> would you recommend that we did something like that? You know, not as a test. I, I believe that. <laughs> 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 I, 
I mean, that's that's going to cause even more confusion. Not an elected position, so yeah. I mean, that's going to cause even more confusion with this door. Yeah, that's kind of where I was. Going. And I was throwing you a softball there. <laughs> the, you know, I, I believe it's kind of up to the Strawberry Festival and, and City Council and what direction they want the Strawberry Festival to kind of move. And I, I believe that. If the police department is called upon for strict enforcement of the door boundaries, it's going to be very difficult. We're not going to write a bunch of tickets for people that are walking across the North Market Street ball diamond. We're going to try to gain voluntary compliance and ask people, but I think a lot of people are going to slip through the slip through the cracks, you know, and not to mention all the other door boundaries. The, the strict enforcement I don't think necessarily is what, what anybody really wants. It's just a matter of, you know, the first year that we have Adora and the Strawberry Festival in place, if that's what the decision is, I think that we're not going to have maybe as many drinkers. As that would become more and more popular, though, I think that, you know, the potential exists for the Strawberry Festival to become like a Mardi Gras atmosphere. Uh, and, and at that point, you know, our recommendations, my recommendations for the police department would definitely be different and more. Uh, what I draw a comparison to is the Gentleman of the Road. We had very few alcohol problems during the Gentleman of the Road tour, uh, it, but we had many more officers, and those officers were paid for by the Gentleman of the Road that had a direct benefit from the ticket sales and things like that. So, I mean, that's a decision I think the Strawberry Festival along with City Council need to make on where the future of the Strawberry Festival wants to go and what kind of alcohol sales they want to be. Yes, it sounds like that we're coming down to the end of the wire here and Council and committee, uh, committee and then ultimately Council, we're only the judges at the end of this. We're not the policy makers. We're, I mean, the policy will come out of the decision we make off of the information that is being requested. But um, the, uh, the items that are coming down at this moment are, are up kind of like some assumption. I'm feeling assumptions were made beforehand that this was going to be a foregone conclusion, and it isn't at this point. So I, I think we're, we're coming down to the final moment, and this may be something that just is not going to be made at least uh, positively for the Strawberry Festival at this moment. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, <clears throat> I, I don't think we would... <laughs> if the Strawberry Festival would have alcohol in downtown Troy, then I would be in favor of suspending Dora because of the confusion it would create. But if, there's, if, not gonna be, if they're not going to have an alcohol venue in downtown Troy for the two days, then I think Dora can coexist with the Strawberry Festival. So I don't. I would not be in favor right now of honoring their request to suspend Dora. Is that your motion? That would be my motion. That's my. Your, you know. and, and we've heard from the absent member of our committee that he would be along with that based on the liability. Mm -hmm. And I don't see anything that we have question about liability, but we get city attorney saying it's no different. So, uh, are you moving? How you want to do? Well, I don't think we need. I don't, I don't think we would honor the request. That's what it boils down to. So we're. So the committee's recommendation would be to not suspend Dora. Right. Anything else? Grant can go home and sit down now. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep against the wall. We are adjourned. Okay, thank you.